Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to be checking out the Bohemian's unique unit, the Hussite Wagon, or Hussite Wagon, depending on your pronunciation. It's part gunpowder and part siege, but also has a unique ability to reduce the damage taken by units behind it, which we'll look at in some detail and how that all works. The unit is based on a real tactic used by Bohemians in open field battle, with wagons filled with archers, crossbowmen, and firearms. They essentially turned open field battle into fortified positions, and I'd say that idea is captured fairly well by the unit we see in game. To start off, as you'd expect for a siege unit, it's fairly expensive, costing 110 wood and 70 gold. For that cost though, you get a relatively high attack, even in castle age, with very high HP and pierce armor as well. It is a bit short on range, though that could be a good thing, since it'll automatically position itself closer to the enemy than your archers. Its cost is somewhat similar to a Korean war wagon, and the two units have notable similarities as tanky anti-archer support units. If I had to give my top two wagon civilizations though, I think Bohemians are getting the number one spot for having the better stats overall. They have more attack, HP, pierce armor, and a special ability that we'll look at in a minute. First though, you might notice the little three in brackets beside their attack. Each round of firing has a main projectile that does their full 17 or 20 damage with very high accuracy, and then three extra projectiles with lower accuracy that always do two damage regardless of enemy armor. The way that's set up means it's actually not ideal to micro and interrupt that firing sequence. If the three extra projectiles aren't all fired before moving, then your next shot picks up where you left off as its own attack. That means you have to wait for the full reload time before you get the main projectile again. The point is they do better when you just let them stand and shoot, or at least make sure they finish all of their projectiles before moving. Getting into some of the more hidden stuff, as a siege unit, it's of course upgraded by siege engineers for more range, as opposed to fletching and armor upgrades at the blacksmith. This is a notable deviation from the Korean war wagon, which is upgraded like a cavalry archer. The Hussite wagon also has a bit of bonus damage against both rams and buildings, though I wouldn't say they're especially good against either. For a speed comparison, you can see they roughly keep up with infantry and battle elephants and are faster than other siege units in general. Their speed can also be increased 15% by a castle age unique tech, letting them better keep up with infantry. In general, you don't really notice their slow speed, as they're often paired with halberdiers, hand cannons, and monks, all of which are also on the slower side. In terms of their creation time, the wagons are made in 21 seconds, which is the same as the Rambai, Organ Gun, and War Wagon, to give some comparables. Unlike infantry unique units, which are usually created pretty quickly, that slow creation time is a bit of a concern. It can make it difficult to go with wagons as the bulk of your army, and is one of the reasons it seems intended to work more as a support unit in relatively low numbers. The other reason it works so well in support is because of a quirky mechanic that we'll get into now. To give a basic illustration, here I have some hand cannoneers dealing 100 damage to unprotected skirmishers, but you can see for a skirmisher shielded behind the Hussite wagon, it just takes half that amount. Normally, every time it does this, the wagon also takes one damage, though every once in a while, something odd happens. Hand cannoneers are 75% accurate, which means for every attack, there's a 75% chance it's a perfect shot, and a 25% chance it's a miss. During a miss, they fire vaguely in the direction of the target, and in this case, there's a Hussite wagon in the way, so it takes the hit. Anytime a miss shot hits an unintended target, it does half damage, meaning in this case, if the hand cannoneer is targeting the skirmisher, then it'll always end up doing half damage to one of those units. Whether you're better off targeting the wagon or what's behind it will depend on the situation, but you can see in a couple of ways it gives real protection to the rest of a bohemian army. Unlike using battering rams in front to distract archers, which is a very popular strategy, the wagons even contribute some attack of their own. Even adding just a few against archers can make a big difference in some matchups. Also, in case you're wondering, it does work for ally units, so they can keep that in mind and get some benefit as well. That's just the basic mechanic though, and now let's play around with it a bit more. The first question is, does the effect of multiple wagons stack? It turns out it doesn't work that way, and only the first wagon takes one damage, and it's essentially as if the other wagons aren't there. That got me wondering though, how exactly does the game decide if a Hussite wagon is blocking a projectile or not? After a bit of playing around, the explanation seems to be that the wagon has a hitbox that extends a bit into the air. Basically, the game checks to see if the arrows pass through any part of it before reaching the intended target. Here, it looks like all of the archers are firing over the wagons, but for the two on the left, we get the effect, and for the two on the right, we don't. The farther apart the two units are, and the closer the wagon is to the center of the arc, the more likely this seems to be. It can't be caused by distance between the units, because if one is closer to the wagon, then suddenly it's enough to cause it to cross the hitbox again. It also can't be a rule about the distance from each unit to the wagon, because we can see a trebuchet with a large firing arc can ignore the effect even when the units are quite close together. 
Through testing, we can get a sense of the height of the hitbox, and it turns out it's not that far above the wagon. Even a unit like the Skirmisher can get around it if both units are far enough apart and positioned in just the right way. Now, I wouldn't say this is something you actively need to think too much about though. As long as your ranged units are pretty close to your wagons, this really shouldn't be a problem. Considering their medium range, they should naturally position themselves in front without you even having to worry about it. So that's basically how the hitbox mechanic works, but I also want to highlight how the mechanic they chose also seems to have added a couple of quirky side effects. The first is the fact that the Hussite wagon always takes the same damage no matter how much it ends up blocking, meaning there's situations it can actually be a bad thing. Here, against some Frank Crosswomen, elite skirmishers take just one damage per attack. Even with the wagon cutting that in half, it's still rounded up to one as the minimum damage. So in a situation like this, the ability isn't giving any benefit and is just allowing the crosswomen to damage two units at once. For another quirk, we can see here that the one damage taken by the wagon happens when the enemy projectile lands and not when it passes through. Notice also if the longbow misses its intended target, it doesn't damage the wagon. Here, we can even see it miss the intended target and hit another one accidentally, yet the Hussite wagon takes no damage again. Since it was technically a miss, the skirmisher takes half damage anyway, but again it tells us the whole mechanic only works when an intended target is hit. This means the Hussite wagon shouldn't protect from attack ground, since attack ground doesn't have a specific target. In this example, one of the mangonels is targeting the unit and the other is using attack ground. The one targeting the unit deals up to 5 damage per attack to the wagon, one for each of its projectiles, while the attack ground doesn't damage the wagon and bypasses the mechanic. This is all totally expected, though one thing not expected is the wagon doesn't seem to prevent damage from mangonels at all. Here you can see with and without the wagon there's really no difference, so all the wagon is doing is taking a bit of extra damage without giving any protection. This may be something intentional as the description mentions being weak against siege, and we can see it works against other melee projectiles, so this seems to be a siege specific issue. For bombard cannons it's the same thing, where the wagon takes one damage but the unit behind it isn't protected. It's the same story again with scorpions, who do their full damage as usual to the unit behind and half damage to Hussite wagons, as they would against any extra units they pass through. This is starting to feel like an intentional exclusion of many siege units, possibly to make siege a more viable counter against large groups of wagons. So that's a breakdown of its stats and mechanical quirks, but speaking of their counters, I thought it'd be useful to get a bit more practical and talk about both their counters and what they're good against. Officially, Siege is what the tech tree points to, and they do take a lot of bonus damage there, especially from the Manganel line and the Bombard Cannon. They also take bonus damage from Rams, so really most Siege units are a good counter. Of course, there's also a few anti-Siege specialty units with their own bonuses that, at least on paper, should do well in that matchup. That said, you don't necessarily need bonus damage to deal with them. Their low melee armor and slow fire rate means they're handled pretty easily by paladins with equal resources, and the Spanish paladins in this case lost only a third of their HP. The fact they're so expensive and have such low melee armor means almost any melee unit can overwhelm them if they get outmassed. Here, with 15 wagons against 25 champions, they're beaten by a significantly cheaper army. Now, one misconception I anticipate a lot of people are going to have is that they're countered by halberdier and skirmishers, just like the war wagon. That's definitely not the case though. The Korean war wagon is weak to cavalry archer counters, but the Hussite wagon is sieging gunpowder, so there's no bonus damage there at all. Instead, it's much more like an organ gun, taking bonus damage from anti-gunpowder units. That said, there actually aren't many examples of those, and Hussite wagons are actually tanky enough to hold up to Condottieri and Winged Hussars despite their bonuses. Personally, I'd rather stick with siege units or try to overwhelm them with some sort of hard-hitting melee unit. On the other hand, in terms of what the Hussite wagon is good against, as we just saw, they do quite well against skirmishers and halberdiers. In this case, outnumbered almost 3 to 1, they still win handily and give a lot of population efficiency against cheap filler units. Of course, they're at their best against archers, especially when combined with hand cannoneers who would normally be at a disadvantage there. Bohemians also have chemistry for their crossbows in Castle Age, so that's another combination that can work well. It seems to me the intention for the Hussite wagon was to be more about support against archers than a unit you would spam on its own. Halberdiers are another popular pairing to give some protection against cavalry, though monks can also be useful to convert siege or expensive units given they only cost food for bohemians after unique tech. Unfortunately though, monks can't heal Hussite wagons, as siege units can only be repaired by villagers. Notice that a lot of Bohemia's key late game units all share a weakness to onagers, which is something you always have to keep in mind. It's probably why their bombard cannons have a unique upgrade, otherwise they'd just be steamrolled by onager civilizations. Unironically, box formation may actually be a reasonable idea with their late game army composition and even calls back to their historical use as well, which I think is a nice touch. 
So that's the Bohemian's Hussite wagon. Hopefully this gave a bit of insight about both how they work and some ideas for using them. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.